All right, welcome back. Whitlock and Wally. Greg Jennings is back and joining us now is DJ Husmanzada. Ooh. Time for a big story. Let's move to Atlanta, where the Rams will make their first Super Bowl appearance in 17 years on Sunday after Sean McVay engineered a remarkable turnaround last season. Los Angeles decided to go all in on this year, shelling out big money for stars like Aaron Donald and Todd Gurley, as well as bringing in several big-name players through trades and free agency, including key pieces like Brandon Cooks and Dama Kinsu, Aqib Tlaib, Marcus Peters, and Dante Fowler. All right, will this be the wave of the future? I think no, because I think Stan Kroenke and this Los Angeles market is one of the few markets that can shell out all that upfront cash mm. that it took to bring all those players in. I don't think the Clark Hunts of the world and a bunch of other teams, only they want to shell out all that upfront cash. Yeah, um, I don't think that it will be the wave. I think it's smart money spent and, and spent wisely. And, and it to, to this point, has worked. Think about what the Rams did. They looked at a losing proposition, which is a quest for an NFL championship. Of all of us sitting up here, only one of us has a ring, and it's Greg over there. 97% of all NFL teams every single year know that they're going home frowning. Only one team wins, only one team gets the crown, 31 L's. And they decided in a losing proposition to get themselves the best hand. And it's weird to me that the psychology around, do you want a super team? And most people say, no, is crazy because... You want the best hand. If you're going to Vegas and they're like, the odds are against you, you're like, well, give me a bad hand too. No, I want the best hand even in a losing proposition. What's amazing about what the Rams did is they actually hid the most, most important element of having some kind of chemistry and continuity. Their offensive line. All five offensive linemen started all 16 games together. And we get lost in the sauce and talking about, oh, this new addition, this new addition. But they kept continuity where they needed it most. I wish more teams would think like this and bring in a super team and stack the deck. Yeah, I don't think that this will be a trend that we see in the National Football League, although teams may want to do it. But you bring up a good point. I, I want to add to that. They're in a market where they needed to make a splash. There were They were fighting just getting fans to game. So what easier way to attract fans than to number one win but to have players that are intriguing to watch every single Sunday and then you you have a structure in place in-house with a young coach who's relatable trans uh, translation to players is right on their level and then you bring in a Wade Phillips who's older who's experienced but you we see what he did with a keep to leave down at, at the Super Bowl that's who he is players love him he has the wisdom the smarts the, the know-how they did everything that they need to do to be able to be successful and to handle personalities. Every team isn't built like that, and every team can't follow that model. The thing is, is which teams feel they're two or three pieces away next year? The Rams felt going into this season, if we can add a couple guys, this could put us over the hump. Seattle. Defense, Seattle, number next one, they, they have the money to do it if they want, if they want yeah. to do it. They, they can afford to give up that upfront money. But if you look at the Rams' moves, Adamic and Sue, Marcus Peters, Aqib Tlaib, defensively, they're worse this year than they were last year. Hmm. So did it really help them? It helped them in name recognition, but did it really help them on the field? Last year, they were 12th in points allowed. This year, they're 20th. That's a huge drop-off. So teams that feel we're two or three players away, whether it's offensively or defensively, I think it's a smart gamble. But everybody has to realize they're one-year deals. Aqib Tlaib, he might not be back next year. And Dominic and Sue, he might not be back next year. Marcus Peters, I'm sure they'll pick up his option because he's young, but they're not long-term deals. It's one year. Let's see if we can strike uh, real quick, and then we can move on if we don't like it. Well, you get yourself some equity. You get yourself some runway when you get that championship. You worry about those problems when you get there. Yes. So many franchises sitting there in the NFL just wanting that one championship, let alone worrying about trying to go to consecutive and go back to back. So I look at the Rams. It was a smart play. You got to make a splash in L.A. They actually landed and made a splash. And then the record with Jeff Fisher in his first year, when you go 4-12, and 12, that'll do it. The Coliseum was packed game one preseason. 90,000 people there. Yeah, they're playing the Cowboys. But everybody in L.A. was like, we don't know if you guys are good or not. Actually, from St. Louis, you weren't. You're seven and nine or eight and eight every single year. But LA was ready. And then they did this. And I think what has really helped is the fact that 
this team put in like Voltron pieces and they had a core. Like you said, they were close, but then they, they went to bed against Atlanta in the first playoff game last year. This is a team that was close, said, let's keep our O-line intact. Let's just add a couple of pieces to give us some dog. What they lost was some dog in the fight last year that they gained from those names this year. All right, coming up, the Pelicans just escalated their standoff with Anthony Davis. We'll tell you why the NBA is hoping this, this feud doesn't go on forever. Next! 